Hi, I'm Joan Foster and I'm lead of the Manhood Peninsula Action Group. And as part of a series of interviews I've been doing um, for Stand Up for Chichester, we're moving on from traffic to look at one of the consequences of traffic, which is air pollution. And I'm delighted that with me today is Rachel Strange. She's a resident on the Manhood Peninsula and she has, well, a little baby and a toddler. And so air pollution is a particular interest to her. So Rachel, what can you begin to tell us? Thanks, Jane. Um, well, I think it's just um, a very pertinent issue that's come to the recent public notice following this really interesting coroner's ruling um, into the death of an 11 year old girl who I believe lived in uh, the greater London area. Um, her name was Ellie Kisser um, Deborah. And um, she was an asthma sufferer, as many children nowadays are. It seems to be an ever increasing condition. Um, and ultimately, um, she lived in quite a built up area where there was an awful lot of car travel going on near to her house. And like most children, um, they like to play outdoors. You often walk to places. It's um, fairly common practice not to be strapped into a car all the time. So she was out and about and, of course, breathing particles into her lungs as part of her daily practice. And unfortunately, um, obviously, um, tragedy struck with Ella when um, she passed away. And it was ruled by the coroner in her inquest that this was actually in part due to the level of air pollution from her surrounding neighbourhood, which as a parent in an area which currently does actually have already quite a significant amount of traffic, particularly during the summer months, um, is extremely concerning. Um, the particles that are emitted from cars are being ingested by children into their lungs and they're causing quite significant side effects and harmful um, repercussions to these children. So this is a particular concern to you that um, with two little children, I'm always aware and have been aware, well, as a parent and a, as a, a grandparent, pushing children along in a buggy, they're just bang slap on the side, you know, as the exhaust fumes from cars come out, aren't they? Very much so. Of course, it's normal for a pavement to run alongside a road. Um, the B2198 near where I um, live is a particularly busy stretch of road close to um, the West Wittering car park and it suffers from an awful buildup of traffic, particularly during the summer months that can be virtually stationary. Um, that is the route as a burden resident for me to take my children through to either the petrol garage to buy supplies or the local shop or indeed the playground and play park. So often parents are walking children on those pavements at a slower pace, which I suppose means that there is a protracted period of time when they are ingesting these harmful particles, which are now known to obviously exacerbate conditions like asthma, no doubt cause other respiratory issues and potentially um, they contribute towards cancer as well. Um, either way, it's not great. And as a mother, I'm extremely concerned at the prospect of further development, particularly in this area. Um, we are quite close to Stockbridge Roundabout, which obviously is where a large proportion of traffic enters and exits the Manhood Peninsula from. And that is a known black spot, so to speak, for air pollution. And with the proposed increase in numbers for housing on the Manhood Peninsula, which I understand also worryingly involves the construction of a relief road of sorts um, stretching down through Donington, um, the traffic is just going to be increased and the air pollution is going to be increased, not only in an area of environmental importance, but into an area where my children, frankly, are living, walking and breathing. And um, that is worrying to me. Um, and I haven't seen the figures, but presumably CDC have paid very close and careful attention to that recent ruling 
and are making careful decisions as to how they progress with their plans in view of that because it would be extremely concerning as a parent to find that they weren't paying this recent development the proper careful consideration it requires and taking that into consideration with any alterations to traffic movement and development I think that's absolutely essential. You are completely right that, you know, that has to be a very high top priority, you know, because air pollution kills. And now we know. And it's interesting uh, um, looking at sort of bits of research, you know, air pollution is much worse when it's hot. And so when it's hot, then up the pollution goes. And of course, when it's hot and sunny, then all the traffic comes down to the Manhood Peninsula because that's uh, where they want to go to the beach. And we've seen it queued solidly all the way down the 286 and 2198 past you down to the Witterings. And if they then, as you say, talk about the, the link road and all the congestion at the roundabouts, it's only going to get worse. You have traffic in those areas virtually at standstill idling with ignitions on for ridiculous amounts of time and um, the traffic isn't going anywhere no one has the information no one necessarily is local enough to know how long they have to wait so there's obviously a reluctance when people have traveled from perhaps a couple of hours away to just turn around and go back they will sit in that queue they'll open the doors they'll have a little wonder themselves but it it is creating a real issue and it's only going to get worse um, as the obviously local population increases as well um, and the traffic on the peninsula increases um, I mean the fact that we also live in one of the warmest parts of the country I'm sure also probably doesn't help with like I say like you've mentioned the damaging effect that these pollutants can have in the warmer weather and yeah. when children, of course, are out playing because they don't tend to play in the colder times, do they? They want to go out in the sunshine. And of course, this year in particular, as we understand that everybody is going to have, if they have a holiday, it'll be at home. It'll be in the UK. And so we are a very popular holiday destination here anyway. And it just feels like those numbers are going to go up and up. I think it's almost possibly one of those hidden problems that the pandemic will have on society is that perhaps more families will take advantage of holidaying in the UK, given the disruption to trying to have plans to travel abroad. And um, so many families now have regular outdoor exercise as part of their daily routine, something that wasn't necessarily um, part of their lives before the pandemic and before the lockdown restrictions. So they are out and about more. And, and as you say, they're holidaying more in local areas. We might actually see potentially an even greater surge in people wanting to come down to this area because people are more reluctant now to travel abroad because they don't necessarily want to put their children at risk. If there's vulnerable children, they don't want to put them on a plane. It's much safer to travel by car to a beachside location. And one of the most popular parts of the country is obviously the West Wittering beaches and generally the Manhood Peninsula because of its environmental importance and significance. So happening to live here, yes, it's, it's very concerning. And it's such a balance, isn't it, between, yeah, great for the poor tourist industry that had a nightmare last year, but then we have all the people who come in and the additional traffic and a nightmare for the residents. So there's no easy wins, are there, around this? I don't think there are easy wins as you demonstrate, but ultimately it's impossible to overlook how a financial implication from tourism could possibly match in importance the health and well-being of our children. And whilst there is a balance that does need to be struck because of course, we can't survive without industry and tourism is incredibly important in this country, particularly this part of the country. Um, we also can't have a generation of children or developing lung cancer or asthma to such an extent that we have a real 
epidemic on our hands in another respect so yes there is a balance but we do have to really pay attention to this and make sure it doesn't run out of control absolutely that is so spot on and yeah what's more a child's life of course um i'm so with you there well thank you so much uh rachel if there's anything else you want to say or are we sort of there now do you think no i just i do think that it's just really really important that hopefully um other parents who live in this area on the peninsula um and who have similar concerns who perhaps have children who already have respiratory problems my daughter for example is slightly vulnerable for respiratory issues herself um, pay really close attention to this and make sure that their voice is heard because you know we're an important demographic group and i don't consider that it's acceptable for us to be treated as uh, people who maybe won't be paying close attention to these plans and who won't say well actually is this really good for the next generation is this okay for our children and where necessary to raise our voices in see absolutely and to and to really emphasize the Chichester district council in their preparation of their plans are they taking into account uh, the, the the true risks of, of air pollution for the future generations okay well thank you so much for your time rachel it's yes it's brought me up makes me think i know i know it in theory but when you think about the child on the pavement that's when it really comes home so thank you so much for your time okay thanks jane